Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Constantinopolis, which is a board game of wealth, trade, and the pursuit of power in the ancient world. And I'm going to be doing a two-player run through today so you can see what it's all about. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel right now so that when I make any rules goofs, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Then welcome to Constantinople, folks! It's the 6th century. This is the Center of commerce, it is New Rome. It is where you want to be in the Western world. And in this game, each of us is an up-and-coming merchant trying to build a whole bunch of buildings to increase our production to be able to fulfill contracts and make lots of points. And now I've already got the game set up here. There's a whole bunch of buildings. Every time you play, the same buildings are always going to be put out. There are the production buildings, the oh, what are they? The commercial buildings where you can convert the stuff you produce into points and money the utility buildings that give you some special little powers, the public buildings, which are just a way to turn money into points, and then also we can construct the wall to give us access to special powers as well. There's also a bunch of ships we can build, although everybody starts with one small ship that can carry up to two goods if you engage in trade with faraway lands. We also start with 30 gold, and uh, that's it. We are ready to go. So, the first thing that happens every round, and you can see the whole round is uh, spelled out right here. The game is going to last either for nine rounds or until all of the public buildings have been built. One of those two things. So anyway, here we are in the first round. The first thing we do is we figure out what job everybody is going to do. We have a little bit of an auction potentially. So there are five roles. The Magister of Fisiorum, the... Uh, oh, I haven't even tried to say these out loud. The... Uh, Praedefecus uh, Praetorio, the Comus Thesaurium, the Prefecticus Urbi, and the Council. So, at the beginning of the game, I am the first player, which means I am the Magister Officiorum. And if I am fine with that, I don't have to do anything. But if I want to change my role, which has two effects, it changes player order, it would put me further down in player order, but it would give me access to a different power. Well, if I want to do that, I've got to pay some gold. If I want to grab any of these that aren't claimed at all, it would cost me two gold to grab them. Um, but if I want to grab the role that Jen has and kick her out, well, I can bid whatever I want. I have to outbid what she's currently got, which is currently not, set to nothing. So I could try to kick Jen out of the Praetorio role, uh, which would cost me one gold. But then that's when the auction starts and she would have the option to bid and try to hold on to that. Although if I kicked her out, then she would by default move over here and then she could decide to go someplace. So, I gotta ask myself, do I want to save some money and just live here as the Magister Officiorium? Well, it's not bad. The benefit of this is I'm first player, and when we get to contracts, I will get to draw three additional contracts. There's a little bit of a luck element to this game, because you might produce all kinds of wonderful goods, but you don't know what kind of contracts are going to become available until, well, what is it, step five. And um, you might draw and find contracts that don't help out. If I am the Magister here, I get to draw three additional contracts, so it ups my chances of getting a good fit. So, you know what? I'm happy with that. I'm just going to stick with that. So, I'm going to pass. I'm not going to change up my role at all. Now, Jen decides if she's going to change up her role. As the Praetorio here, she gets to generate one additional cube of resources above and beyond what she could normally produce. So, uh, she's got this farm. Everybody starts with a farm, kind of a hard baked into their, their own little area here. So, she'd be producing three food instead of two if she keeps this. And, you know, and this is a round where, hey, three food can be given to the uh, people of the city and that could score you two victory points. But if Jen wants to, you know, I don't think she's going to stick with that. She's going to pay two bucks to change her role. Jen's, right, so there goes, all right, there goes uh, five. She gets three and change. She's not going to try and take first. Since she's second player anyway, she could go on ahead and take one of these other ones. If she gets to the uh, Thesaurium, um, basically, if, as long as she holds on to this, she's making four additional gold every round, potentially for the rest of the game, if I never try to take it from her. So a two investment could pay off quite bigly. So I think Jen's going to pay two. Right, oh, I didn't put her two in. Jen's going to pay two for this. All right, 
Now, if there was a third or fourth player, you know, oh, well, first of all, if there was a third player, Jen would have had to bid to kick that player out. Um, and if she ultimately ended up with this, then the third player would have bumped into her spot. The third player could try to go someplace. The fourth player could try to bump her out. There could be a lot of jostling, or there could be peaceful coexistence if everybody is happy with their jobs. Now, in a two-player game, you're not going to get a lot of jostling because there's five jobs and only two players. Chances are, it's not necessarily worth getting into a bidding war. I mean, unless you really, really, really want access to something. But for now, Jen's just happy to make this early um, uh, investment so that over the next few rounds, it'll pay big time dividends. And in fact, she's going to get that right now because we are done. I've got my final. I just stayed where I was. Jen paid to switch. And now this is when she gets her extra four. All right, so there's a five, one change. And this is where whoever would be the Praetorio would get their extra cube. Now, neither of us were the Council or the Perfectus Urbi, the urban prefect. Both of these have to do with giving us access to building different types of buildings. By default, we are not allowed, no matter how much money we have, to contribute to the defense of the city by building these walls. You have to be the Prefect Urbi to be able to build a wall. The Council, well, it puts you in last place if you take this, but you get kind of a preeminent right to build whatever building you want. Because even though you're in last place, if somebody was going to build the hospital over here and you really wanted it, you could say, hey, I'm the Council, and you could jump the queue and build so if there was a building you desperately wanted to build and you thought somebody else was going to build it, you want to grab the council so that you can basically force to be the one to get to build. Anyway, though, so we're done. We, we've chosen our spots. Now, step two of the round is all of our ships at sea move forward on their voyages to get to foreign lands to get to foreign harbors and deliver their goods and make us points and money. Now, at the beginning of the game, we only have one ship and it's not loaded with anything. We don't have any contracts. So in this first round, we're going to skip it. But later on, once I've got contracts, this ship might be at sea and will, over time, work its way into harbor and pay give a big payday. So we're skipping that since nobody's ship. Now we produce. Everybody has one farm at the beginning of the game. And as you can see here, our farm produces two green cubes, two food. All right. And as you have more production buildings later on, we will produce more and more and more. Now, we come to one of the two big complex steps of the game. This is the building phase where we can spend money to build new buildings. Although, since neither of us are the urban prefect, nobody can work on the wall buildings, which is too bad because they're worth potentially a lot of points at the end of the game. The more of them you build, the more you construct of the wall, the more points you get. Plus, they give you special powers, but nobody can build those. But we are going to be able to build these, and this happens in turn order. So, the icons remind us here of three things. Hey, we can build buildings by spending money. It doesn't remind us, though, that we can only build... We can, I build up to four buildings, one of each type. I cannot build two green buildings or two red buildings. I can build one red, one yellow, one green, and one purple. And one gray if I were the urban prefect. Also, we can go to the market to buy or sell goods if we need some money or we need some goods. And finally, we can use any of the yellow commercial buildings that we have. We can activate these to give ourselves access to money and points if we need it. So, I'm the first player. I'm first out of the gate. So, what do I want to build? Well, let's see here. If I build these red buildings, that means I can produce more goods. Um, which is kind of an important thing. Now, like I said, at the beginning of the game, I have a farm here, which is an A building. Now, what that means is, at the beginning of the game, you can build A buildings. The, uh, the, this mill here, the Pistrinum, uh, which is an A building, or the uh, Domus, or the, the textile place. I can build any of these. But because you have an A, I also have access to b building B buildings, the uh, metalworks, or, or the, the Cura, or what have you, which produce different types of goods. Now, I cannot build C buildings until I have at least one B. I cannot build D buildings until I have at least one C. So there's kind of a small tech tree going on here. If I ever want to make yellow luxury goods, the most valuable things in the world, at the Sculptoris Dominus, I have to first make some level C, which means I first have to make some level B. So I think I'd like to make a level B building. So I got to ask, which one am I going to do? Uh, because they cost 12, 16, 17, or 20 of my 30 starting gold. Hmm. You know what? Let's go big. I'm going to go on ahead and spend 20 of the 30 I've got to build this metalworks where I can make red, i.e. military 
weapons and whatnot. So this is now a B building that I've got, which means in the future, I can build C buildings. Now, I've still got 10 gold, which, and so which means I've still got enough money to build a green, a yellow, or a purple. Although, actually, I don't have near enough for purple. I need at least um, 24 to build a three victory point public building. This is an interesting thing about the public buildings. There's two that are worth three points, four points, five points, and six points. If I want six points, uh, so I want to build one of these, first, the more expensive one has to be built. After somebody builds this, then the cheaper one could be built. It's weird. I don't understand why they don't have a set it up like this, because this would make a lot more sense as a reminder. Hey, um, you have to build this one before this one can be built, but they don't have a set it up that way. Anyway. So, I don't have enough money to score points, but I do still have some cash. I could get one of these cool special power buildings, uh, or I could get one of these buildings that let me convert the goods I make on my farm, or now in my metallum, into money and points. So, I could invest nine in this, and then next round, when I start producing weapons, I could turn right around and sell them here for seven bucks and one point. And that could be just a little tiny engine I run for the rest of the game. Although, if I get a contract for those weapons, it'll probably make more sense for me to ship them overseas. So, this is the thing. Like I said, when I'm going to draw weapons... Oh, by the way, I should say, I now have two production buildings, the farm I started with, and now this metalworks. So, I move over here that I have two production. That means later on, when we're getting contracts, because I have two production buildings, by default, I get to draw two contracts plus... Since I'm the Magister, I'll get to draw three. So I'm going to draw five contracts. That means I'm feeling like I've got a pretty good shot, if I'm drawing that many cards, that I will get a contract that will let me uh, do stuff with my weapons. So I don't think I need to get this. If I didn't think I had a shot at getting a good contract, I might want this to have a guaranteed way to turn my red cubes into money and points. So... Do I want to build one of these over here? Or do I want to save my money? Because when we get to step six, I can also spend money to build more ships, to do complete more contracts, and to build trade houses, which give me a certain amount of control as well. So maybe I want to save the rest of my money. Although if I want some more money, I can come over here to the current market, the Portus Elanius or whatever. Uh, I can spend, I can sell food. I can buy food for one, or I can sell food for one. I can also buy more um, weapons for four and sell them for three. Although there is a very weird... Um, it's hard to remember. There's an important restriction when you go to the market. You cannot buy goods that you can produce. So, because I can produce food, I can't buy more food at the market. Um, oh, it's interesting. You think, oh, well, look, he can produce weapons, so he can't. In this first round, since this hasn't produced weapons yet effectively, I could still buy weapons right now if I wanted. But in future rounds, I will not be able to buy weapons. Now, there is a way around that restriction if you build... Oh, which one is it? Oh, it's the, um, the uh, Taberna here. Uh, the, the, the Taberna. If you have this, you do not have the restriction. You can buy stuff from the market that you can produce. So, heck, maybe I'm first out. Maybe I want to get this because I'll never be able to buy food from the market. And if I'm just desperate for a little more food, I might want to buy it for super cheap. What the heck? Let's go on ahead and do that. I'm going to spend five more gold and build the Taberna. Alrighty, so now I could, I could now go to the market and not be restricted by what I'm able to produce, if I wanted to. Now, I could, and I'm, I'm down to five now. I certainly can't afford any purples. I can't build any grays. I can't afford anything else. So, if I want to stop, this is where I should stop. But I do have some food. I could sell that food. I can't buy, uh, normally, you can't buy more food, although I can now. Um, but I could sell food if I want a little bit more cash. But hey, you know what? This food... It only costs one. It's never going to get cheaper than that to buy food. So, now that I have lifted my restriction, I think I'll buy some more food for myself. I'll take this five, and I will buy two food. So, I spend five, I get three in change. And I've got two more food. I've got the two food I made at my farm, and now I've got two more that I bought. Now, it's interesting. I grab those two cubes, and I put them over here in my storage to store them. I also have to take two more food cubes and put them over here on my ledger because there is another restriction. This says that um, in, in the market today, I can either buy or sell exactly two food cubes. I can't do any more. So that's why I put these over here. This, this will get cleared out at the end of the round. This is a reminder that I cannot engage in trade with food anymore. This is the food I actually got. This is just a ledger marking that I've done all my food trade. So. Now, I've still got three bucks. 
I could buy one commercial good if I wanted. Um, and if I can look into the future, I can see on the future market, well, tomorrow or in the next round, I could sell the stuff I buy for three, for two. That's not very good. But I could buy weapons for four and then sell them for six. I could buy up to two weapons and then sell them for two. But I'm so low on cash, I think I'm done. I'm not going to buy or sell anymore. So here's the thing. I've got now... Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, having bought this puts me in a little bit of danger because I am only allowed to store one good at the end of the round. Now, my ship, if I get the right contract, remember, I'm going to draw a bunch of contract cards, so I'm assuming I'll be able to get a ship that um, takes care of two, but then I'm still going to throw one away. So, hmm. you know what? Actually, I guess I should have only bought one food. Yeah. Um, just because I don't want to have to throw food away. I've got this two plus this one. So, um, you know, I, I bought it while it was cheap because I could. I'm going to end right there. So, I am done with this. I didn't have any yellow buildings, so I couldn't activate them. I did do some market stuff. I built a couple buildings. It is now Jen's turn. All right. And so, this is gone. She can't do it. Uh, Jen would probably like to get some more production buildings as well. <clears throat> Although, if she gets a yellow building, you know, the food that she generates at her farm, she could put it into this to basically not worry about contracts at all and start turning food into money and points every turn. Not have to worry about storing anything either. So, and remember, Jen made a little bit more money, so she's got some money to spend. What the heck? She'll go on ahead and buy that for nine. So there's a 10, she gets one in chains, and that is the one yellow building she can build. And now later on in the round, or actually, no, right now. She can do it right now. She can activate her yellow building. So she will. She'll go on ahead and turn this, uh, this food she's got in. And now she, we put this here as a reminder that this building can only be activated once in a round. It'll get cleared out at the end of the round. Jen just made four more gold and her first fame point. She is the most famous merchant in town. All right. And she's uh, still holding on to a lot of cash. Where me, I'm totally broke. But I'm hoping this is going to pay off over time with contracts and whatnot. So, she cannot build another yellow. She's still got a lot of cash, so she probably should uh, build some stuff over here. Now, this is an interesting one. This, every time she sells stuff at the market, she can make an extra buck. That's nice. This, uh, if she has weapons uh, that she generates, not weapons that she buys in a market, but weapons she generates herself. This is an interesting thing about the yellow buildings. You can only activate them with goods you generate yourself. You can't buy goods from the market and then activate yellow buildings. So Jen would have to get a building that generates red, and then she could feed this building with her own red cubes. And this, uh, once per round, if she feeds it, will give her a $5 discount on building another building. So that's pretty cool. This one lets her store four goods. Now I'm kind of thinking, Darr, why didn't I buy? Why didn't I build this building so that I could store stuff? Ah, if I hadn't built, if I had a little bit more cash, oh, you know what? Actually, I totally forgot about that. Okay, uh, I'm putting Jen on hold for a second. You know. No, no, no. I'll just live with that. I'll live with it. But Jen, she might want this. But you know, she's not planning on having anything stored left over, so she doesn't need that right now. I don't think she'll go with any of those. The discount on buildings in the future is pretty nice. But uh, speaking of, if she wants to buy that for five, let's say she builds it for five. Okay. Okay, boom. She's got this. Now, um, unfortunately, like I said, she could use this right now if she already had red cubes she generated, but she cannot buy red cubes to feed this thing. So she can't use the discount right now. But now that she wants red cubes, she'll pay 12. 10 plus 2 is 12. To get this that just generates one red. So now, Jen is generating red in the future. This will feed that, that will feed that. Jen doesn't need contracts at all. Okay, so she has built a yellow, a green, and a red building. And by the way, she has increased her production just like I did. Boom. All right, you can see how having that extra four bucks has really paid off for her. Um, right. And like, by the way, uh, this goes away. Uh, if I want to take this from her, I'd have to bid at least one to take it in the future. So anyway, um, so Jen cannot build another red or green. And she does not have a money build purple. She's not allowed to build grays. So she's done building. She's activated her only yellow building she can do. Does she want to buy or sell in the market? Because now she has no goods. And she could still, although... She cannot buy food. She cannot buy weapons. She could buy consumer goods or she could buy... Oh, um, oh wait. Ah, shoot. Black is the weapons. Red is industrial goods. Like, you know, industrial grade metal and stuff like that. That's why 
I was thinking, why does my Metalworks make weapons? It doesn't. It makes metal. Um, you know, so Jen could buy some weapons, the black cubes. Um, not that she could sell them next turn, but if she were to buy some, she would hope that she gets a contract to use them because um, she can only store one. Um, she could buy some consumer goods, having a, but no, I don't think she's going to buy anything. She has nothing to sell because all that she's generated, she put into there to make some more money in points. So that's it. We're both done, and now contract time comes. Jen gets to draw two contracts. I get to draw one, two, three, four, five contracts. So let's see my five. One, two, three, four, five. And Jen draws one, two. And now everybody chooses simultaneously how many of these contracts they would like to accept. Now, here's the thing. I said right up front, you need to have the goods to be able to accept these contracts. All I've got on hand is one, two, three food. And hey, I drew enough. I got a contract that needs two food. So I'll take this one I bought and one that I produced from my farm. And that's two goods. Uh, my, the one ship I have can only hold two. So let's go on ahead and load this ship up. Now, ships can hold multiple contracts. If you have like a big ship that can hold up to eight cubes, you could do multiple contracts on it. But my little ship, my little fast ship can only hold two. So I'm going to put this contract on here. And this contract says, if it's done with a little ship, which is what I'm doing, it's a fast contract. It won't take very long to pay out. So let's go on ahead and put the ship in my fast lane. So next round, this ship will deliver and I'll make some income off it. Now, I've still got these other contracts. If I don't take these contracts right now and put them on a ship, I'm going to lose them. They'll just get discarded. Except there is one thing I can do. Um, right now, I, you know, let's see, we drew our contracts. And, oh, and by the way, I have not actually claimed this contract yet. Right now, I'm just thinking about what contracts I'm going to do. And I'm planning on how I'm going to fulfill them in step six. In step six, I can buy a trade house. I can buy up to one trade house per round and one ship per round. So I would need another ship. But another small ship, the cheapest is six. I'm down to four, so I can't buy another ship. I could, however, buy my first trade house. A trade house, uh, one, the more trade houses you have, the more contracts you get to draw, so you up your chances of getting what you need. And having a trade house also lets you store a contract for future rounds. So I'm looking at all of these. And um, so there's this contract. I produce red. Uh, next round, I'm going to be producing red. I could get this contract done. I, I don't have a ship to do it right now. So I think I will keep this, though. So I'm keeping two contracts. The other three are gone. Right, so they all get discarded. Um, and meanwhile, Jen's looking at her contracts, deciding... Right, so Jen has no black cubes, military stuff. She has no green cubes. So Jen's not keeping any contracts. Uh, so her ship is going to go to waste, unfortunately. But that's okay. Uh, she wasn't planning on getting a contract. Now, there are contracts in here that aren't about um, shipping goods, but instead are about shipping um, passengers. Passengers can go on a ship and you can make less money, no victory points, but you could at least have your ship doing something. Jen was hoping she'd draw a passenger, but hey, she only drew two. Her chances weren't good. She didn't get one. So her ship's going nowhere. So she didn't keep any. I kept two. One of them is going on the ship, like I said. The other one... I am now going to spend three because I could buy one trade house. I'm going to buy my first trade house. Now, this means if my trade house isn't being used, I get to draw an extra contract in future rounds. But I am going to use it this turn to hold on to this contract so that I'll have it for next round to fulfill it with the metal I make in my metalworks there. All right. So... This, um, this stage can be a big complex stage like the build stage because you actually deal with your contracts. You can, go, once again, go to the market to buy or sell. Um, you can, once again, activate your yellow buildings if you haven't already done it. And this is when you can buy or sell. Now, I still don't have any yellow buildings. I could. I've still got one green left over, but it doesn't make much sense for me to sell it. I'm just going to end up storing this at the end of the round. So... Is Jen going to do anything else? She could. She has enough money to buy another ship or to buy trade houses. I think she will buy a trade house, even though she's not... Because this means as long as she has this, she's drawing more contracts to up her chances. And does she want to buy another ship? Jen has seven. Well, she, she could buy another small ship, but not a medium or a large ship. Nah, she's not going to. And she's already activated her yellow building. Is she going to... This is her last chance to buy or sell at the market. Hmm. All right. And she's got seven left, but so she could buy a, a, a blue, which she could use for a, a contract in the future. 
Like, what were the two cards Jen got? Actually, the two cards Jen got did not need blue anyway. So I don't think she's going to do any market stuff. So we're done with step six. Now we move on to sex step seven. Now, remember how I was worried, oh my gosh, what if I have too many cubes? If I had, I mean, this was my ledger I bought. If I had three food right now, I've got one left over. Um, but if I had bought some more, but I could only buy two, my contract needed the two. If I could have had three green cubes left over, I could have given them to the people to score victory points instead of storing them. That's what it is here. We can um, give our excess goods, and that's just a way to turn them directly into points. But neither Jen nor I can do that. Actually, oh, wait a minute. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about Jen. She has these two. No, no, these two cubes have been consumed, so she doesn't have anything left over. I don't have enough left over, so nobody's contributing to the commonwealth of the people to score points. And now, at the end of the round, this is when we got to store. By default, we can only store one thing, but one player could store up to five things if they build this building. So I'm going to store. Jen doesn't have anything to store. This market is done. The new market comes into play, and we can see what the third round market is going to be like if we want to try to engage in some buy low, sell highs. Uh, yeah. Uh, although, yeah, I mean, we could buy two blues and then sell them later, as an example. But, you know, the, the game doesn't really feature a whole lot of buy low, sell high because the margins are pretty slim. This is mostly about completing contracts and all the rest of it. So anyway, so a uh, new thing comes out. We reset. So my ledger, because I did buy and sell some stuff, Jen's stuff over here, and my storage. I'm also storing this contract to fulfill next round. And we store our stuff. We have finished the first round of this game, folks. And now it's round two. And once again, we have to decide. If we both just hold on to our current jobs, then nothing changes. I have one gold. That's all I've got. And if I wanted, I could go on ahead and spend it to try to kick Jen out of here. Now that I'm drawing more contracts because I've got my trade... Although, my trade house is occupied, so it will not let me draw more contracts. I want to make sure I can still keep getting contracts, so I don't think I want to kick Jen out. Um, Jen, and Jen paid to get in here. She's happy to stay and continue to make more money. So here's the four bucks she's making off of that. One, two, three, four. As long as she continues to hold this. Although... Again, if nobody takes the, uh, the, the Urban Prefect, nobody can build the wall, which gives you access to special powers and potentially a lot of points as well. Like powers to let you convert cubes into other cubes or, or draw extra contract cards or make it tougher for people to outbid you so that it's, or make it cheaper to buy ships. Um, you know, all kinds of stuff. Hmm. No, but no, Jen's just, Jen's just happy with the money. So we now move on to, hey, Jen doesn't have any boats, but I do. My ship is going to sail. It was a short trip. because Now, it was interesting. If I had actually taken this contract and put it into a medium or big ship, it would have been a long trip instead. And every time you do an epic long trip you can potentially score bonus victory points because the renown of your merchant uh, ships travels that you went to the other side of the world and all that. But I had a short trip, so I didn't make any points off that. Anyway, though, so all your ships move one step forward. My ship moves in. It has delivered this food. Uh, I get my ship back so I can use it again. And hey, I made one point, just like Jen, and I made seven bucks. So, I'm sitting at 8, Jen is sitting at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and this contract is completed. I'm actually doing my job, folks. So, ships have gone, now we produce, and hey, I'm going to produce 2 food in my farm and 2 metal in my metalworks. Jen is going to produce 2 food in her farm and 1 metal in her whatever that Latin place is. We produced and now we are back once more and I have first dibs because Jen is, you know, Holding on to get, making more money. I got first dibs to build buildings. I don't have as much money as I did last time, but um, I've got to decide what I want to do. Do I want to be able to store some more stuff? Do I want to buy or sell? Because I can, uh, I can buy in the market. Um, you know, if, if, if I mean, if, because I because I got that to Berna. Do I want to uh, upgrade to a level C building and start generating now the black items, military goods? I would need fourteen gold to do that. I'm kind of broke. Um, if I wanted, I could sell my two um, metal. That would give me eight. So I could actually afford to buy that. And then I'd still have two food to do a job. Oh, 
Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to go on ahead and first of all, go to the market, sell all my red, and I have to put this over here in the ledger to remember I cannot do any more business related to industrial you know, red cubes. But anyway, so that got me 14. All right. So, right? Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. Eight. Uh, um, so, so that's right. I'm up to 15 and I'm going to burn it all and uh, build this. Uh, the armor and fiber, uh, for, right, which leads me down to only one buck. Oh my gosh, I'm broke again, folks. But now I'm generating red and black. All right, and um, my production has now increased to three. So by default, I'm drawing three plus three contract cards. I'm feeling fairly confident that I'm going to be able to um, uh, get a contract for my food, drawing that many cards. Or if not a contract for food, a contract for a passenger. Although remember, no, that's what I want. I want to draw a bunch for a contract because I already have this con- <gasps> Oh my gosh, I need that red though to complete this contract. Drat, I saved. Now I don't have to, I could just keep on holding on to this contract for round three. That's a possibility. Hmm, and then hopefully get a, you know, a, a passenger or a food contract. Yeah, I think so because I really want to. I mean, now I'm you know I'm I'm drawing six contracts. I should be able to find something good. So we'll go with that. Boom, and I am done. And Jen, meanwhile, says, "Oh, okay. Well, I've got, I've got a lot of cash. What do I want to do? Well, first of all, Jen will go on ahead and feed her. Oh, let's see. What well, the 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 Capona? There, there's actually. Uh, it's a tavern. She will feed this food into her tavern to make another point and another four bucks." All right, let's see, we need two more twos. So, Jen's got enough to just keep on building, running a successful local tavern. She doesn't have to ship anything anywhere. Um, but she will also take this uh, industrial good from her carpenter's workshop and put it into the Redemptor, which is, oh, what is it? It's a, I can't find it on the list. Oh, it's, oh, this is a property development, right. This is property. The carpentry work she did is now going to give her a five. So this basically turned this into a five dollar discount. Jen effectively has five more gold she can spend on, um, on on the construction of one of her buildings this round. Right. So so Jen's got five, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22, 23, 24. Jen could go crazy. Jen could start building um, the public buildings and scoring big points. Or she could up her production. Um, right, I don't think she needs to store more stuff because she's burning through all her stuff right now. So what does she want to build with her? What was it? It was 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, five or 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, um, 15, 20. She has effectively 20 to spend. Hmm. Does she want to get another A and just start producing some commercial goods to give herself some more flexibility? Um, you know, she could be selling. I mean, if she buys this now, she could sell them for, uh, you know, next round when she uh, produces them, she could sell them for six bucks if she doesn't get a contract. I think she likes that. What the heck? It's only 11, but it's not really because of the discount with the Redemptor. Um, she's paying six for that. So here's, there we go. Boom. And so Jen has built another level A. So um, she hasn't gone up to level C's like me, but now she's producing five cubes worth of stuff every round. And now she cannot build any more reds, but she could. She still has money. She doesn't have a discount anymore, but she could build more stuff. Two, four, six, eight. She has nine left over. Hmm. Does she? Uh, no, 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 no. I think, I think she'll stop. She'll just start saving up money. And next round... I mean, she'd like to start saving up to start building the wall because if she builds a lot to the wall, not only does she get these powers that let her convert goods or other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Jen's just going to hold on to her cash. She's starting to save up. Or maybe she'll buy herself a bigger ship. Who knows? But anyway, so that's it. Jen is done with hers as well. She's not buying or selling because she doesn't have... She could buy. She could buy some blue. Um, but she could buy it for three just to sell it for three. That doesn't make any sense. She's going to be generating blue next turn. She's fine. So um, she's not buying or selling. Now we do the contracts again. Oh, and Jen is also. Jen's drawing three. I'm drawing six. Here's my one, two, three, four, five, six. And Jen's only drawing three. She's hoping to see a... Um, well, she has no good, so she's hoping to see a passenger. 
to use her ship. And she did. She got lucky. Boom. She's going to have this passenger sail. Oh no, but this is a passenger who will not sail on a baby ship. Only on a medium or large ship. It must be a group of passengers traveling. So Jen can't do this. No. But, but wait. Jen's got cash. Okay, I think Jen's going to keep this contract. There's these ones for food. Oh wait, oh wait, oh wait. Jen got to draw one more because she had a trade house. Let's see what she, her fourth one. Yeah, still a passenger who won't travel. Okay. So, Jen will go ahead and she will keep this passenger anyway. All right, so that's her. And meanwhile, I haven't even looked at mine, my six that I drew, not seven because my trade house was holding that other one. So, remember, okay, I want, um, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, let's see here. Now, unfortunately, I'm totally broke. So, I, even though I've drawn so many, I might, oh, nope, uh, okay. All right, uh, I've got a passenger. I'm trying to remember, maybe passengers don't ever f go on small ships. I'd have to go back and look. I thought they did, but uh, it's been a while since I played. Maybe not. Anyway, so here's what I've got. This is the one I've held over. Now, uh, none of these want two food. That's why I'm wanting to ship. Two food. But, hmm, shoot, shoot, shoot. Uh, and if I want to build another uh, trade house to buy another one, I'd have to have four. I'm down to one. I could sell the two food I've got to make two, so I'd have three. Three wouldn't let me buy another trade house. Three wouldn't let me buy another ship. I've stretched myself too thin. Three would not even let me buy, three would let me buy a commercial. Three would let me buy a commercial and I could put it on this ship. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, folks, of all these contracts I drew, I'm just gonna keep this one. All right, there we go. All the other ones go away. So now we resolve how we're going to do this. I don't have blue. What am I going to do? Remember, I can go back to the trade house. I'm going to sell all this food because, uh, right, and I'll put it over here on the ledger as a reminder that I can no longer engage in food trade, but that made me two bucks. The, um, the two plus the three is going to let me buy one blue, because that's how much they cost, one commercial good. So now I've got a commercial good and I have to mark the, in the ledger that I can't do any, I, I could still do one more commercial trade if I wanted. Now, um, my good old Parvis Dromo is gonna set sail. Once again, it's a short trip. It's kind of, I mean, it's kind of wasteful. I can put two, but it's just gonna be one. But hey, I'm, that's gonna be some income for me, five bucks and another point next round, okay. So there we go, off it goes, and I don't have any red left over. I'm totally broke, but I'll just hold on to this for the future. Uh, and next round, I'm gonna start generating military goods too. Right, oh, did I have a military slash red in here? No, I didn't, I had a food slash red. Did I wanna save this one? Probably do, yeah, you know what? Um, I kept this one too to dump this because I'm not gonna hold on to this because this one, I'll have green and red next turn. Um, so this one, but it's only a slight, it's only one buck more. No, 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 I'll stick with my original one. I'll stick with my original one, there we go. So I've got no more money, I'm pretty much done, but my ship has set sail. Jen, meanwhile, she got the passenger, you can't put it on board, but Jen is so um, um, flush, she's gonna spend all nine that she's got left and buy a medium size ship. And this guy will happily take a short trip on a medium ship. So Jen has set sail now as well. And that'll make her four bucks. As you can see, oh yeah, yeah, that's right, of course, of course, Durr. Yeah, as you can see, on medium ships, you can put one passenger on them. On small ships, you can never put passengers. I totally spaced on that. Anyway, so there we go. So we both um, fulfilled the contracts. They've been set off. If we had any goods left over, but we'd have to be working on that. We're using our goods, so nothing to donate to the people. And now the third round is gonna start. We have another market and we can see what the future market is gonna be for buying and selling. Uh, we reset our ledgers. Jen didn't do anything, I did. Uh, we store, I've got exactly one thing to store left over. Jen has nothing because she's consuming all her goods in her own little business there. And we move on to the third round where once again, you know what, I have to stay here because I literally have no money. If somebody else wanted to, if Jen wanted to, if she had any money, she could spend one and kick me out and I would just have to, and I would end up swapping places with her, which I'd like to. But um, yeah, I think I'm done with this, but um, uh, I can't. So uh, this third round, I'm going in broke, but I'm about to make some money and we'll see how the game continues. But you know what, folks? I think I'm gonna stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Constantinopolis is all about. And if you wanna hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.